Hey, uh, Mike McGrady here. I want to show you, this is a purple sand cherry. And really, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some hardwood cuttings off of this. It's, uh, this is actually the day after Thanksgiving here in Ohio. Um, so I'm going to take some hardwood cuttings off of this plant. But I want to show you what, why it's so important to prune a plant like this. Sand cherry is a sun-loving plant, and it grows like this. And then the top starts to shade the bottom of the plant. And once that's shaded, you won't get leaves because it, it really likes sun. So they get really thin at the bottom. So it's important when these things, when you're, when you first put one of these in, to trim it on a regular basis. Now, last year I came and got cuttings off of the same plant, and I trimmed it, you know, here, 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 here. So you can see what that does is that forces it to fill out. Earlier this summer we got some cuttings, and you can see that. This plant was cut here, and you got three bud breaks. The same thing here, it was cut here, you got multiple bud breaks. And that's why it's important that once you cut a plant like this, then you get multiple bud breaks coming from that same location. That's exactly what you see here. It was cut here, and there's multiple bud breaks. And I'm actually gonna remove that and show you up close what that looks like. So you can see where this plant was cut in here, and now all this growth down here, and that's how you get plants to fill out. The more you trim them, the more they fill out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a bunch of cuttings off of here, and then I'm gonna take, we'll take these back to the shop. I'm gonna show you how to do hardwood cuttings, and I got a couple other things I'm gonna show you, where to stick them and so on. All right, now you can see that, that I have cut this plant back substantially, but everywhere I cut it, we're gonna get multiple bud breaks, and then come next spring, this sand tree has the ability to put on probably at least 24 to 36 inches worth of new growth every year. So it's important to keep them trimmed, especially when they're young, because you want it nice and full down low. So this kind of pruning is really does the plant a world of good so that it fills out and stays nice and full at the bottom. Then you end up with a really nice plant. It's not going to be spindly. It's not going to be see-through. So that's a lesson on uh, hard pruning of uh, deciduous flowering shrubs. All right. I'm uh, making my, my hardwood cuttings. These are the purple sand cherry cuttings. I had a big bundle. So you can see I've done quite a few of them. And I'm going to show you up close here. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm just going to remove some of these side branches, little twigs off the side. Real quick. All right, so now, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to find a node. Right there is a node. That's a leaf node and a, or bud. Next spring there's going to be a leaf pop out there and eventually a branch. So I want to cut right below that. I'm not going to cut into it. I'm going to cut right below it. <clears throat> and then that's where the plant, this, this cutting is actually going to make roots. This is a very heavy cutting, but I've found in the past that sometimes with hardwood cuttings, these heavier cuttings like this actually work pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead that's my cutting right there. And you gotta kinda <coughs> pay attention so you don't get them upside down because they, um, they're, not, they're not gonna root if you stick them upside down. So again, that's kind of, a, well, I'm gonna go above that. All right, so there's right here, there's a leaf node there and up there, there. Okay, I'm gonna cut right below that one. And then up here, I'm gonna cut right below that one there, because that's where my next cutting will be. <clears throat> so we'll cut right there. That's getting kind of thin, so I won't. I won't even use that one. Um, that one's thin. I'm going to save that one. So anyway, that's that's all I'm doing is I'm just you know one more time for your benefit. Again, this is kind of where I removed it, so I want to get, eliminate that. There's a, a node right there, and then right here, <coughs> I'm going to cut right below that node, and that's going to make up my next cutting, the bottom of my next cutting, and I'll get one there. That's a usable cutting, and there and there. Whoops, dropped one. That one's kind of small, but we'll stick it in there anyway. So, Essentially that's all I'm going to do, and then I line up the, the butt ends a little bit, make sure I got them all going so the buds are pointing up, and then we dip them in here for about five seconds. This is a rooting compound, and I'll show you uh, here in a second exactly what that is. 
put them over there with all the ones that I got dipped. Now this is the rooting compound that I'm using right now. It's Woods rooting compound. This is a liquid. Um, this is almost identical to dip and grow, the active ingredients. So you can use a powder rooting compound. Ro rooting compounds are, they help, especially with hardwood cuttings. But they're not absolutely necessary. There's no real magic in the rooting compound, but it, it helps to use it. It will increase your, your chances of success. So it, the brand that you use, there's gels, there's liquids, there's powders. It really doesn't matter. And when you use a powder, they make different powders. They make a powder for softwood cutting and then a stronger powder for hardwood cuttings. With liquids, you simply use a liquid and then you dilute it. You know, um, for these hardwood cuttings, let me check the bottle and after I'm already doing them. But yeah, one part woods to five parts water. So for a hardwood cutting like this, you're going to use one part of this to five parts water. If you were doing these in June, you're doing really soft cuttings, then you would use one part rooting compound to 20 parts water. So that's the advantage of, of the liquid is that you can adjust it by simply by the how much you dilute it. All right, let, I'm going to take these outside. I'm going to show you how, exactly how I'm going to stick them in the propagation box. Alright, so I'm going to do the, the sanitary cuttings. Hopefully this thing's not going to come down and smack me in the head again like it did a minute ago, but it's windy out here. So basically, I'm, I'm just using this broad knife to make a cut in the sand. With hardwood cuttings, that's not near as important. Softwood cuttings are real pliable and it's hard to get them stuck in there. So these are already dipped in the rooting compound. So essentially, I'm going to stick them in there probably about three or four inches. They're about that thing is huge, but this is kind of an experiment to see which ones are going to root and which ones aren't. Um, making sure I got them going the right way. Sticking them upside down is not going to work. So I've got all kinds of different sizes in here from probably bigger than a half inch to down to uh, uh, three, a sixteenth of an inch or maybe slightly bigger. So. Um, but essentially, that's basically all I'm going to do. I'm going to stick them in there like that. And uh, once I get them stuck, then I'll come out here with some water and I'll wet this down real good because I don't want air pockets down around the roots. And then they're just I'm going to leave them here all winter and the, put the cover down and that'll help keep the moisture in here. As soon as the weather gets cold and everything freezes, this growing medium is going to freeze hard as a rock, but it, it probably really not going to hurt a thing. Um, as soon as it thaws out, then the cuttings are going to start rooting again. It, it's really a bit of an amazing process. So just like that, they're about an inch apart. I could put them a little bit closer, but basically that's, that's all you do. And uh, the secret from here on out is you just keep them uh, Go ahead and keep keep them good and watered so that they can't uh, that they don't dry out. And I'm gonna stick some in that uh, the the other medium because I'm really doing a test in here. That medium is kind of a, a hardwood bark combination, of hardwood bark compost type material. And I'm gonna see which works better. But I'll tell you right now, I do a lot of stuff in sand, especially during the summer months. Sand is almost all that we use. So, all right, Mike McGordy from uh, Mike's Backyard Nursery and FreePlants.com. Uh, I, I hope you've gotten something out of this.